let's blind taste some rosé. So I try not to think too much about color in rosé because I think just because it's dark doesn't mean it's sweet. But this is a little bit on the sort of the, the dark pink, kind of fluorescent pink, like popping side of color for rosé rather than salmon, rather than something that's a little more oxidative where you get like more, more variation in the rim or something that's a little, that, 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 that has more like sienna notes. This is, this is just like straight pale pink in the glass, a little darker in the, in the decanter, but fluorescent kind of popping young fresh pink. So level of intensity of that color, I would say uh, pretty intense, medium intensity. It's not really gassy, there's not a lot of dissolved CO2, and it's sheeting, so sugar or alcohol are both probably pretty low. So immediate intense, like florals on the nose. This is this is not a, a shy glass of wine. It's really pretty pretty exuberant in the glass. I hate to use the word medium plus when I blind taste, but it's higher than medium. It's it's uh, when you stick your nose in the glass, it's instantly sort of present and alive. It's fresh and fruity and floral. It's kind of a cherry blossom uh, like uh, strawberry Kool Aid sort of uh, maybe like orange candy vibes generally pale red fruits and uh, maybe a little bit of peach. Let's see what we get on the palate. So acidity here, it's fresh. It's not an insanely long length of acidity. It's not really bright. So it's somewhere that was able to get this pretty ripe, a little bit warmer, a little bit lusher. On the palate, the fruit is a, is a bit denser. It's still lifted and nice, but it is a fruit-driven wine, fruit and floral. The acid that's there is this sort of like mallet, like green apple skin lemon zest, sweet citrus like clementine, and then overlaying all of that is strawberries and cherry blossoms. Juicy, fruity, medium intensity. And then as far as the length goes, really driven by, by fruit and, and, and a, a bit by that alcohol, by that ripeness, it's like a, like a medium length. A little tannic grip, this sort of chocolate-ing quality that suggests to me sort of some people would call it minerality, but I, I see it as tannic structure that maybe maybe is, is edging it up to medium tannin for rosé. I mean, to the extent that rosé has perceptible tannin, this this has some. So let's say let's say middle for rosé. It's easy to drink. Got a little bit of that sort of cherry Jolly Rancher quality to it. The alcohol is not low. It's it's it's. Warm place alcohol, I would say like 13.5. So sort of like middleweight acid, elevated alcohol, more driven by fruit, aged in stainless or something equivalent. So body here along with alcohol is elevated. It's not high, but I'm gonna use that word I don't like, let's say medium plus. Oh, sorry, I didn't say the most important part. Everybody asks if rosé is dry or sweet. This is a dry uh, but fruit-forward rosé. There's no appreciable sugar that I can detect. All right, so where in the world is this coming from? It feels Mediterranean to me. It feels sun-kissed. It feels like a place with relatively modern winemaking technology. You see the dissolved CO2 uh, in the decanter, so basically like this is like reductive and fresh and young. So, I mean, current vintage, let's say 2018. Great variety. It's nothing too high acid, not like Pinot Noir, not like, um, you know, so it's not like Sancerre Rosé, for example. Um, So I think I'm gonna go with, with Corsica. If it's rosé from Corsica, it's probably in Patrimonio in the north on limestone. So the grape would be Neoluccio. So I'm gonna say Neoluccio is the variety, 2018 the vintage, Patrimonio the Appalachian uh, from Corsica in France. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. All right, Rosé d'Anjou. We're, we're in the heart of the Loire Valley. 
mostly on schist, you can get a level of sort of intensity and phenolic ripeness that, that might be surprising when you think about how north in, in France you are, so I feel decent about that. And this is definitely a rosé with enough sort of body and texture and stuff going on. I think people get scared when they see rosé that's any color other than the palest of pale, and I think rosé should be treated like wine. You should be able to blind taste it, unsuccessfully in this case, and you should put it on the table and age it and, and think about it like, uh, like white or like red or anything else. And uh, I'm glad I got to drink some wine from Loire today.